Hello, my name is Tom Walski from Bentley Systems, and today we're going to be talking about water distribution system flushing. This uh, first talk is really uh, just an overview of flushing, and we'll be going to be getting into the more detailed how to do it within Water Gems and WaterCAD in later presentations. Okay, so as an overview, first we're going to talk about what is flushing, and in our case, we're going to be talking about it as opening up hydrants or bluffs and water distribution systems in order to improve water quality. Now, that sounds pretty straightforward, but now the next question is, well, why should we be flushing? This is one of the, the key questions that need to be answered before you jump into a flushing program. And there's a lot of different reasons of why you flush, and determining why you flush determines how best to model it and how best to actually conduct it. The really different goals, the two general categories is one is trying to improve water age and chlorine residual and those kind of properties. And then there's solids removal, trying to move the solids that have settled out in the distribution system. And these are two very different kinds of flushing with two different approaches that need to be taken. Then within that, we also have the idea of conventional flushing versus unidirectional flushing. And we'll define that in more detail, where conventional flushing basically is involves opening up hydrants in some logical order, while unidirectional flushing involves also closing of valves to direct the flow to a very precise set of pipes. And we'll talk about when to use each, because each one has its own benefits and difficulties. And along the way, as we go through these, we'll talk about how we should use modeling to help do a better job with flushing. Okay, so the big question is, why are we flushing? Well, removing solids is usually the most common thing. So in removing solids, you're trying to increase velocity. Improving disinfectant residual, you're trying to move clean water into an area with stale water. Responding to complaints is really kind of a hit or miss. It depends on what the exact complaint is. Some places, the goal of flushing is removing biofilm. In this case, to the extent that it works, you need to get a very high velocity in the distribution system. In other cases, people uh, do flushing not so much to improve water quality. That's more of a side benefit. And what they're really doing is they're supposed to be out there testing the hydrants to make sure that when the fire happens, that the hydrant will actually open, and that the isolation valves aren't closed or nothing, the stem isn't broken or, or stuck closed. So there's very different reasons why people flush, and each of these requires a different approach. In other cases, when contamination of the system has occurred, and you need to get water that you suspect of being contaminated out of the distribution system. So there's a lot of reasons for flushing. So let's go through each of those one by one. Removing solids in the distribution system. In this case, we're trying to prevent turbidity or color. We don't want the water to be cloudy. We don't want it to have color. And usually for this, the key is velocity. Or really what it is is shear stress. You want to shear, have a high shear stress along the pipe wall, which is going to stir up solids and move them out of the system. So when we're trying to talk about flushing for solids removal, velocity and shear stress are the key things. And the key goal here is to increase the velocity above that during normal conditions, that under conditions that would have allowed the solids to settle out in the first place. So if the solids will settle out at, say, 0.5 feet per second, you need to get the velocity well above 0.5 feet per second. You don't necessarily need to get 7 or 8 feet per second, but you need to get it fast enough to stir up those solids and move them out of the system. As you'll see through all of these, you want to flush with clean water behind you. You want to make sure that the water you are flushing with has been brought in from a part of the system that is relatively good quality. Okay, now the next type, uh, next most common type of distribution flushing is trying to re re improve uh, residual of disinfections. And usually what we do is we use water age as an indicator of this, although that's not necessarily the case. But th this is you know, probably the second most important. Use. In this case, now we're trying to bring fresh water into an area. But in this case, velocity, shear stress really aren't that important. It's just a matter of moving bulk water into an area as opposed to how fast the water is moving when it gets into that area. Important thing here is to understand the initial water quality. So what you should do before you start modeling flushing is model the existing water quality to get an idea of where water age is high and chlorine residual is low. And then afterwards, you want to do an analysis of how fast does the water quality deteriorate? How long does it take for water age to get really bad or chlorine residual to drop off? And the model is another great way to study that. In some cases, it may be that uh, you know, a week after you do flushing, we're predicting that your disinfectant residual will drop again. In those cases, you may actually need more than flushing. You may need blow-offs, even automated blow-offs. Okay, responding to complaints is kind of a tough 
so problem to address because what you need to do is understand the nature of the complaint. Does the water taste bad or is the, if it is, then we need to be talking about moving things along in water quality. If it has a, a lot of uh, turbidity in the water, we just understand why that turbidity occurred. And as I said in the previous two slides, the response is going to be different for color turbidity, which will usually involve trying to increase velocity versus taste and odor problems, which is trying to bring water that is of high quality into the area that has low quality water. And in addition to responding to complaints, though, you need to develop a history of where you have chronic problem areas and use that history in order to do a better job with planning the flushing going forward. Then we get into the case of removing the tax growth. Now, in this case, you really need to get in there and understand the nature of what you're trying to remove. You need to do some pilot areas where you use different velocities and see, does changing the velocity really change the kind of biofilms you have in the pipe? Some people say, uh, imply that you can possibly remove some tuberculation or corrosion products that are attached with flushing, and usually you can't get a high enough velocity. I have seen some situations where you remove some loose scale uh, with flushing, but usually the velocities and the shear stresses you need are too great for this. You need to go with something like pigging or scraping to move some of these. The goal here, though, is to first of all establish some kind of flushing criteria. What is it that distinguishes flushes that are successful from those that aren't? And in some cases, you may need some fairly high velocities if you're trying to remove attached growths. They may not just be a little bit higher than the normal velocity. And then, of course, there are people that are basically are doing flushing, not so much to, for water quality purposes, although that's a side benefit, but it's really to make sure that the hydrants are going to operate when the fire department comes there and needs them. So that's a, a much different kind of goal. In this case, basically, you need to operate every hydrant. There's no long flushing runs. Instead, you want to operate each one. And again, you don't want to do this randomly. You want to be able to flush with clean water behind you so that as you're flushing, you are improving water quality as a, a side benefit. And also you want to document operation. What's the pressure when you get out there? What kind of flow can you get? Because with this kind of information in an asset management system, you can look for trends and see places where the, the flow that you got out of a hydrant d decreases suddenly. That might be an indication that someone has left the valve closed or partly closed in the system. So you should record what you observe during this kind of situation. Then there are cases when you, there is either a known or suspected uh, contamination. It may have been a, a backflow event in the distribution system. Now, the, the success of this, though, depends primarily on the extent to which you can identify where the contamination is. There's usually some plume of contamination. Now, if you had a good handle on what caused this event, then you could do a much better job in figuring out how to flush. Again, the rule is flush from clean water to dirty areas but you really need to do some careful planning. What you don't want to do is open up a hydrant away from the, the plume and draw that contaminated plume further into the system. So you need to do some planning. And again, modeling can help you look at the what is. What if we open up this hydrant versus that hydrant? You know, we don't want to uh, spread the plume. And while you're out there, you need to do some monitoring for contamination while you're out in the field flushing to make sure that you are successful in removing what you're trying to remove. Common threads across all of these are flush with clean water behind you, plan before you flush, and your hydraulic model can be very helpful in doing this sort of thing. And then when you're out there flushing, document the flows, pressures, and if you're collecting water quality information, collect that kind of information as well. And big thing is safety. Be careful out there. You're in traffic. You can damage property. You can damage cars. You can be struck by cars. So safety, safety, safety is very important when you're out there working on flushing projects. The types of uh, flushing, as I said, are conventional. It's very easy to set up. You can really you get by with a very minimal crew. Usually, you, if you're flushing for velocity, or you can get a high enough velocity. And if you're flushing for quality, you can get a high enough quality. But you should model this ahead of time to understand what the direction of flow is and where you're moving the water. You know, directional flushing takes a lot more work to set up but it uses less water and you get much higher velocities. So where you need really high velocities or you really need to control the direction of flow, you know, directional flushing can be worth the effort. My usual approach is to try to model things with conventional flushing. And if you can't get the high enough uh, quality or you can't get a high enough velocity, then look to unidirectional flushing. So the key thing here is why are we flushing? And we see there's a lot of different reasons. 
uh, whether just hydrant testing, attached growth removal. Usually the blue ones there are for cases where what you're modeling is moving water quality around. You don't really need to get high velocities. The orange ones are ones where you really need high velocity. So there are some different uh, approaches and different kinds of flushing that you can do. This is kind of my general overview. So once you understand why you're flushing, you can figure out what your targets are and you can decide if you need to use conventional flushing or unidirectional flushing. So modeling flushing within water gems and water CAD, we have basically our flushing manager, which is how you can set up flushing events in particular where shear stress and velocity are important. Now in these kind of events, we're doing a series of steady state runs. So we're really not tracking water quality over time. Instead, we're trying to get high enough shear stress to clean the pipes out. But we also have the ability to do extended period modeling. And these kind of model runs are great for tracking quality changes, uh, watching the water move from a source to areas where you have problems and watching where clean water and how long it will take for clean water to move into an area during flushing. So again, it goes back to the question of why are we flushing and why you're flushing are going to depend how you're going to model it and how you're going to flush. So in summary, it's very important to understand why you're flushing and modeling can help you in planning your flushing projects and water gems and water cat are, have some great tools for making this possible.